this is the centennial. Carberry started out as Venable. And my dad, Ben Williams, used to brag about living in three towns but never moving. First it was West End, then it was Venable, and then it was Carborough. Carborough has a reputation throughout the state as a small town with a big heart. Longtime residents like Carly Partington, whose parents moved to the area in 1909, remember growing up in a warm, welcoming community. The population of Carborough was very small. Couldn't get away with a thing. If your own mother didn't catch you, somebody else's did. So we were well disciplined, there's no doubt about it. Neighbors helping neighbors. It was all part of Carborough's charm. He used to say everybody in Carborough was related by blood or marriage. And if you weren't cousins, you were married to somebody that was, and <laughs> that kind of thing. But it was, it was just a small town, very close-knit, and a warm, caring town. The town is named after Julian Shakespeare Carr, a Confederate soldier, philanthropist, and businessman who owned the mills in what is now Carmill Mall. Before it became Carborough, it was known as Venable, in honor of University President Francis Preston Venable. And before that, well, it was simply known as West Of, or West End, as in the West End of Chapel Hill, a mill town where folks worked hard and fostered a strong sense of community. I know people that were down on their luck moved to Carborough to, to survive and usually prospered because people looked after them when they came in. It was a very giving town, very warm place to, to live. To fully understand Carborough, you have to know about its neighbor to the east, Chapel Hill. Today, the two towns seamlessly flow together. Blink and you might not realize you left one and entered the other. But it wasn't always that way. By the time Carborough was incorporated in 1911, nearby Chapel Hill was a thriving cultural community thanks to UNC, the nation's oldest public university. Carborough was more blue collar, a burgeoning industrial town with multiple textile mills, eventually becoming one of the most successful railroad cross tie markets in the country. Even though the town was literally just down the road from UNC, it maintained its own identity. Carborough folks have always felt a strong sense of identity and uh, kind of separateness from Chapel Hill, which is our big brother next door. How things have really changed in the last 20 years is we no longer really live in their shadow and kind of come into, into our own as a community. I think that makes a lot of people who've lived here their whole lives feel really good. Carborough Mayor Mark Chilton says the town continued to thrive even after the mills closed in the mid-1960s. Our nickname is the Paris of the Piedmont, uh, <laughs> which when that term was first coined was sort of, uh, it was meant as a joke or meant to be ironic, I think. We're trying to really live up to the name and be a community that's diverse and multicultural and places a real emphasis and value on the arts as a part of our community. The artistic and cultural lifestyle, not to mention cheaper real estate prices than Chapel Hill, has attracted plenty of newcomers. Carborough's population has swelled to nearly 20,000 residents, and officials are carefully plotting how the town will manage its future growth. We're a community that's really uh, committed to trying to be a sustainable community, so we're much more focused on public transportation and bicycling and walking than many towns in North Carolina. And I think we're also a town that's very focused on trying to support our local economy and our local businesses and our local farmers through our farmer's market and our economic development work as a town. All of which adds up to, you know, having a, an unusual outlook on life. But uh, I really believe that where we're headed is toward the future for all of North Carolina. In the late 1890s, Tom Lloyd built this cotton mill known as the Alberta. For the past 100 years, the mill has been the historic heart and soul of the town. Today, Carmill Mall continues to be the unofficial front lawn of Carborough. Carborough is the luckiest town because it has a front yard. How many towns still have a front yard? Uh, not many, if any. Carborough has offered that to the community, Carmel Mall and Weaver Street Market, as a gathering place for the community. That is the essence of what Carborough is, welcoming, vibrant, energetic, and reaching out to all people, uh, promoting new ideas, new businesses, new enterprises, new arts communities, and I think that we are very, very fortunate.
State Senator Ellie Kinnaird served as mayor of Carborough from 1987 to 1995. She attributes the town's vibrant spirit to its willingness to embrace new industry and residents. I would say that in the past hundred years, Carborough has been evolving. I like to characterize Carborough as being a town that lands on its feet, that takes whatever opportunity comes by to their advantage. From its days as a mill town to its current cachet as a sustainable artistic community, Carborough has evolved into what Senator Kinnaird calls the Arts and Leisure Center of Southern Orange County. Today, Carborough boasts one of the nation's most celebrated farmer's markets, where growers are treated like rock stars. And speaking of rock stars, it has plenty of those too. The Cat's Cradle has become a must-play venue for bands touring up and down the East Coast. Over the years, Carborough has seen its utilitarian and agrarian roots grow into one of the most liberal towns in North Carolina. People love Carborough. They love the, the atmosphere. They love the, the real feeling that we embrace anything anybody can think of. 